been a long road since the original kicker christened that first pickup truck. It kicked off a car audio renaissance, and upgrading your music in a vehicle was a requirement. America's Music Machine became live and loud over your passion, your emotion, your existence. Outdoors or on the open road, your sound is kicker. Do not attempt to adjust this transmission. We have assumed control. The year is 1980. Music fights for its very survival in an acoustically desolate wasteland man calls automobile. Enter Steve Irby, a man whose love of music helped end this scourge forever and forge a path for modern car audio to follow. A humble musician with a passion for quality sound, Mr. Irby is a man who feels it is his destiny to provide a sanctuary for mobile audio. Welcome. Join us this evening as we venture back to the very night a young Steve Irby gains his inspiration to create the legacy we know today as Kicker Performance Audio. Though he does not realize it now, by this time tomorrow, Mr. Irby will have completed blueprints for the original kicker and champion the war against mobile audio inequality. Tonight, Mr. Irby's prayers will be answered as he begins his quest into the Q Zone. Kicker L7QB8. With roots dating back to Kicker's inception, Mr. Irby and his team of engineers have achieved an unrivaled level of design and functionality. With extraordinary base and a minimal footprint, the L7QB8 utilizes a seamless quarter inch extruded aluminum housing, allowing optimal internal air volume for the subwoofer. This exclusive design provides exceptional strength and stability. Like the original Kicker, the L7QB8 incorporates a unique passive radiator to minimize required airspace while optimizing the efficiency and frequency response of the subwoofer. Opposite the passive radiator, the L7QB8 is equipped with the all new 8 inch L7 square subwoofer. The 2016 L7 features an aluminum basket for exceptional strength and thinned aluminum heat sinks for efficient heat dissipation. Kicker's blue lace spider, solo cone 360 degree back bracing, and a laser etched cone brace combine as a single ultra rigid unit. The result is increased clarity, higher volume, and added reliability. The square cone features over 20% more surface area than round subwoofers. It's attached to a Santa Prene surround, then stitched to the cone for long life and durability. This surround features Kicker's patented rib corners, which fully dictates cone motion and extends surround life. At the base of the unit, a pair of custom form flanges integrate seamlessly with an extremely low profile mounting system, consisting simply of a mounting plate and ball. Once installed, the overall height of the enclosure is only nine and a half inches. This profile is small enough to work perfectly in countless trucks, sedans, and SUVs. Once again, Kicker sets a new standard with the groundbreaking design and unparalleled performance of the all new L7 QB8.
frequencies detected emanating from the heavens. Saucer-shaped objects confirmed all over the world. Unidentified flying K saucers spotted delivering Kicker's amazing new Comp Q Super Woofer. Built for precision. Built for abuse. Built for the future and benefit of mankind. Kicker's new Comp Q Woofer leaves audiences astounded and amazed as it reveals subtleties in their favorite music in a way that is sure to make women blush and grown men cry. The surround features Kicker's variable cross-section high-roll design, allowing extended cone travel and excellent cone control. It's firmly attached to the cone, reinforced with our iconic stitching. Betsy Ross would be so proud. The injection-molded solo cone and laser X cone brace combined in a single ultra-rigid unit. Venting in the brace relieves performance robbing back pressure. All this adds up to very low distortion and amazingly clean low bass. A progressive roll blue lace spider adds even more cone control at maximum excursion. The woven tinsel leads are sandwiched between the spider and the lace for durability and long life and to prosper. The spring terminal's heavy-duty square design accepts wires as big as 8-gauge or two 12-gauge wires for multi-sub installations. The high-temp voice coil is rumored to be spun upon the looms of the gods of polyamide fiberglass, along with a reinforced former for high strength and power handling. Now, add colossal magnets, plus a cavernous bump back plate, an extended pole piece created in a single forging, the likes that haven't been seen since the creation of Pacific. Sidon's trident, and the result is a driver with superior control and effective heat dissipation that extreme performance demands. The all-new Kicker Comp Q is designed from the ground up to deliver everything you demand from a premium subwoofer. High output, deep, powerful, accurate bass, remarkably small enclosure requirements, stunning good looks, and not to mention the ability to frighten small children when turned up to 11. So there you have it, the all-new Kicker Comp Q subwoofer, another zenith of innovation and epic majesty from Kicker. I built my first speaker uh, to be louder. I was playing in a band and the drummer played so loud and the keyboard that I had wouldn't play very loud and I went to my dad and said, I need a bigger speaker. It's a Fender Bandmaster, it cost $300. He dropped the newspaper and said, $300? Yeah, but he didn't say no. He said, is it something that we could build? And so that's how I got started building speakers. The thing that, that I love to see is a product that we made and get to stand back kind of anonymously and watch somebody take a look at it, listen to it, and go, wow. I think that's what really lights my fire is to make products that people enjoy and have fun with. As time went on, I heard people say, you know, Kicker's like a family. I actually didn't set out to do that. Uh, I thought it sounded kind of hokey. I thought they were insincere and in just saying that. After a few years, I realized, uh, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's what we've got. And that's the key is the good people on your team in the band that makes the band really great. Well, I think Kicker is primarily a lifestyle company. That's a little backwards of where I started. I thought we were a technology company and uh, we would make great products, but as time went on, realized that it's about people and uh, helping people to enjoy their life and what they do. And that's what I do, too. So share the love a little bit, I guess. <laughs>
standing in the rain with his head hung low. He couldn't get a ticket. It was a sold out show. He heard the roar of the crowd. He could picture the scene. He put his ear to the wall and like a distant scream. Here at Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly on Tuesday night, 7.30 Central Time, coming to you live. How you doing, everyone? It's Kip, your host, joining you live here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, for the Tuesday night edition of Kicker Unmasked Live. We have got a lot of fun we're going to pack in tonight's show. As always, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping here in the beginning. Try to see some great comments, throw them up on the screen. Fantastic that you guys tune in. We love having you here. If it's your first time coming, I noticed there were for a few time, a few first timers in the feed. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully you get something great out of this and have a good time. If this is your second or third, or for a lot of people, it's your 20th plus time coming, man, thanks for coming back. We sure appreciate you joining the feed. We appreciate you uh, adding comments, and uh, we like being able to bring this content to you guys. So with all that said, let's kind of get into some housekeeping. You know, we do a drawing. The, it's been scrolling across the bottom of the screen. We do it live every show, and it's just for the people who attend the show. And it's kind of our special way of saying thank you for coming to the show. You got to be here to enter. You got to be here to get the know that you won. And then you know we send out those prizes. So tonight's drawing, you've seen it go across screen. It's actually everything is kicker.fun. Uh, it's a website that we use for all that. So it's kicker.fun forward slash full spec F U L L S P E C. That drawing will be going live until 8.30 Central Time, and I stress that, so anybody out there who's in a different time zone understand that any time I say a time, it's Central Time. So 8.30 here, obviously that's 9.30 on the East Coast, and it's an hour behind us if you're in the Mountain Time Zone, and then two hours if you happen to be out in California or Vegas, that direction. So you've got a good solid hour now to enter that contest. That's kicker.fun forward slash full spec, so please go enter that. Get in the opportunity to win some of the great prizes we're going to be giving away tonight. And as always, if you've been tuned into the feed, I always pretend like I don't know what the prizes are and that you don't either but I found out about show 17 that you guys actually know what's in the drawing so good one on me uh, JD Vay from Hoppy Industries joined us about mm, be five weeks ago now and he joined us on the show and we had a fantastic show where we talked about all the cool products that they make they make the the audio shade uh, they make some bigger versions have extensions on them to get even bigger and louder and they make this product called an audio mini which just goes up front which gives you great sound if you don't need big big sound but you do want to overcome all the noise that you have in your ATV TV and so we had him on they make some fantastic fit and finish products and they utilize kicker gear head units amplifiers and speakers and we talked him into at that time like hey why don't we run a uh, five-week contest and the way the the kickoff on the show works is if we kick it off on a tuesday we can run it until the monday of the fifth week and then we draw the winner on the tuesday so it's almost a five-week uh, run for the contest and jd said yeah sure he said i'd love to get a hoppy audio mini up as the prize so we worked with hoppy industries and jd and he was very gracious to do that and we've been running that contest for the past five weeks and i don't know what the breakdown is because obviously you get more entries if you do different things but I think we've seen over 30,000 people enter that contest, which that's a lot of people to enter a contest like that. And we thank you for entering that. Uh, we're going to bring JD on and we're going to discuss things with him, uh, get into the products that they have. I think there's something new he wants to show us. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second and announce the winner here at the front of the show of the Hoppy Win a Mini contest. Speaking of contests, I always like to touch base on this. Uh, it is something we want to do. We like to try to bring everyone who tunes in. We have people tuning in from all over the world, and we love to have you tune in and watch the show. And we do want to try to include as many people as we can in the contests and drawings. But understand there are just difficulties with shipping and tariffs and taxes and all sorts of things that make it a little difficult at times. But we have worked out uh, a way to make that happen with our distributor up in Canada. That's Jemson. And they are fantastic up there. They are basically the kicker people up in Canada, north of the border, and they're working with us. So now, if you're from Canada, you can enter the drawings that we're doing here on Kicker Unmasked Live. So I like to bring that up. We had our first Canadian winner last Tuesday, so that was really fun for that. Uh, I'm going to go over here to the feed real quick, see if there's anything. Sandy or Jacob, do you guys have anything you want to put up on the screen? Alan Brockhouse. Hey, it's my first time getting to watch a stream live. I'm watching from the OK State campus in Stillwater. Hey, you literally are in our backyard. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And, you know, I said that if you've been watching the last couple of shows, you know, Sandy and Jacob have been in training to kind of take over because tonight's show, we have Bill out who's out on vacation and we have Jeremy Wynn. Jeremy's normally here for the whole show. Give a big wave back there, Sandy. How about you, Jacob? Thanks. So you can see they're back there uh, doing the best they can to cover up every mistake we make up here in front of the camera, and they do a really good job at it. 
but they actually came in and trained so that Bill could take a vacation and then, hey, hold on to that one there. <laughs> what an intro, Kip coming in on fire. You know, it's just one of those days, days, Jesse, and I was listening to that song on the radio, and, and I don't know if it's good or bad to admit this, but I can tell you every single word to the whole song, but neither here nor there. That's a, I'm an old 80s rock kid, pop, hip hop, all that, so it kind of sticks in my head. But, uh, and then uh, Jeremy, he was out, hey, hello, good evening from Nebraska, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Jeremy's back. He was actually out at Lake Havasu and out there for the Desert Storm Poker Run. And that event's over. That was this past weekend. Hopefully, if you were in the area, you got a chance to swing by and check out the XRV and all the cool toys we had on display. Lots of boat stuff, obviously, with that being a boating event. Uh, but he's back. He's going to be out uh, enjoying a little bit of vacation time for the next few days. So Sandy and Jacob are trying to fill the shoes of Bill and Jeremy. And who knows? They may do it actually better. Deviant for life. Sandy is my Beardy favorite employee. Beardy's favorite employee. Those of you who don't tune in, uh, we didn't get a chance to get those up with Bill being on vacation. We crossed wires and to get the pictures, but we'll get those pictures up of uh, Deviant's bearded dragon with a kicker shirt. That's going to be pretty cool to take a look at. David Shane Ramsunder. Hopefully I got that all right there, David. Hello, David here. First time on. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. Way, hey, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining. When we say people tune in from around the world, it literally is around the world. Can't thank you enough for tuning in. Hope you enjoy your time here. Uh, hope you get some good information from this. And, you know, get in the comment feed. There's lots of great people in here that love to answer your questions, whether it's on the kicker side or, you know, there's the Living Loud with Andy McGill, our good buddy Andy. He is definitely a hot kicker fan. Uh, very knowledgeable. And, you know, if you have any questions, he's in the feed here. He'd love to reach out and help you out if you have any questions on product or application or whatever you may need. Andy's a good guy, and he's here to help you out. So we've got all that going on. Todd Wolf, I'm here a little late. Sorry, kicker, never missed a show. So, Todd, you're one of the few people, or actually one of the many people. There's actually a lot of people that have been here since day one. Thank you for tuning back in, man. We sure appreciate it. So tonight's show, we're going to talk about a very controversial topic and understand when we get to it, it's going to be fun. Or as, as my buddy Ernie back there behind the switcher likes to say, it's going to be a good show, a real good show. And so when we get to that, it's going to be interesting. We've got a lot of science and facts to talk about. And we got a little demo here we're going to show you. If you've never seen it before, it's going to be really cool. And if you have seen it, it'll be a little bit of a refresher. And you never know what other surprises we may have up our sleeves. So with that said, uh, any other comments coming in? Jacob, Sandy, anything else you want to pop up on the screen? I'm, I'm running a little short tonight because I know we got a lot of stuff to pack in tonight's show. Uh, Juan Dominguez, A&B Car Audio and Security from Dallas. Hey, Juan, thank you for tuning in. I see you there. Hello, Kipper. Hello, Kip. Kicker, the goat says hi. Bobby, thank you, sir. And he does have a goat named Kicker, and we need to get a picture of that up here on the screen. We will get that done. My beardy fell asleep before tonight's show. Oh, uh, that's okay. We know his heart's in it. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let's get J.D. Vay from Hoppy Industries up here on the screen with me because I'd like to pick his brain and find out what is new and cool and happening over at Hoppy Industries since we started the contest with you guys about five weeks ago. Welcome to the show, J.D. Hey, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You know, it's our pleasure to have you on the show, and, and sincerely, we can't thank you enough for you know coming on the show and talking about all the great products that you guys manufacture. Uh, you had a lot of great things to say about Kicker. I mean, we kind of feel the same way about you guys. I mean, you take our products and put them in some fantastic-looking and performing enclosures. Uh, and I'll have to say, uh, the first time I met you was actually at the MVP show, and I got to hear the for that audio shade. And blown away. The performance of what you guys put together, I know that you kind of said, yeah, it's working with your engineers and trying to get things the way we want, but man, you guys, home run. What you guys do with our products and turn it into performance, it's there in spades and it shows. I just got to give you that. Well, we appreciate that a lot and, uh, you know, always part, it's always just all the tools and we just get the best speakers and best amps and everything we have and we just do our best to combine it and not mess it up um, and then we do what we do well. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success with those audio shades. The sales this spring have been amazing, like a lot of things in the power sports industry. Probably one of the biggest side by side out there. And uh, kind of late some of our launches recently, but we're, we're catching up. And we've got so much in development right now, so it's just not time. Uh, if you guys are listening back there, I'm getting garbled feed from JD. Is it his feed or my head buds? Okay, it's his feed. Okay, you're just garbling up. I can kind of hear what you're saying, JD, but your audio is breaking up bad. <laughs> he's, 
hey, look, it's Kip, and he's trying to make sure it works. <laughs> we, uh... All right, let's see if that works now. You know what, J.D.? It, it does my heart good to see I'm not the only person who falls victim to Bluetooth. <laughs> I uh, I wanted to change it earlier and then oh well but I'm uh, there we go I got a little knot here but we're fine. Nope, nah, that's good, man. You know what? It's it's live. Mistakes and everything happen here right before your eyes, and that's I guess that's part of the magic of it. Both so, times, you know, obviously, both. <laughs> That's true, both times. <laughs> so obviously the, the audio shade, I kind of like, you know, I, I don't want to pick a word just to pick a word, but I like, you know, maybe you want to call it the Lexus or the Cadillac or the Range Rover. I mean, it, the audio shade is definitely what I consider the high end of a product that you can put in an ATV TV above your head. It's solid built. It does more functions than just audio. And uh, it, it's a premium product at a premium price. And, you know, it's for someone who wants all that performance. They want the features. They want the lighting. They want everything to come along for the ride. Uh, I feel it's justified for what you get out of it but then you uh you know let us know last uh, time you're on which was five weeks ago and that's the prize we're putting out on the drawing today is the audio mini and and don't you have some news about a new audio mini hey, hey ernie don't you have some video to roll yeah so we have uh, a new mini that we've launched just uh, today um and then i think it goes public tomorrow in some ways for the uh for the Razor, so the polaris Razor two and four door you can see it right there it's more for the sportier packages um, it gets the same four, six and a half inch speakers and has a KMC2 head unit, you know, AM, FM, Bluetooth, all the features. Comes with the dome light and as always, what makes this really great to work with is it's the in ease of installation. Comes with two CNC laser cut brackets um, and it's just basically eight bolts and the wiring harness. It runs straight down to the front, right into the firewall, plug and play. All the connectors from the OEM uh, are on it. So, I mean... I tell you again, and I'd say if you've done them before, 15 minutes, but if not 30, it's a completely sealed unit. So it's just uh, premium sound um, as you get from all kicker audio components. And then the design and the placement, it uh, works with the factory roofs, light bars, windshields, everything that you have with it, even rear view mirrors on this one, on this model. And uh, really just helped us open up another avenue. So. Um, this also the other thing that's really great about this is that this is allowing us to get into the frame rails of the sportier modes So this is a razor and this will fit many others and we're getting ready to launch as well uh, the Talon for the two and four doors and then even the Kawasaki's um, The uh, KRX 1000s and stuff. So we've got a bunch of products coming that this this situation fits real well you are definitely a busy man. I mean, you and I have had the discussion about how not just the products you've got to market that you've been, you know, you've had a good year and, you know, people are very excited about them, which has kept you guys hopping. But you're obviously also working on new products, and so that keeps you hopping as well. So between those two, uh, you get much sleep? No, this, this is not a good time of year for sleep, and uh, uh, it's, it's been crazy. And so we, we have three audio shades in tooling at different processes, and we have three sets of audio minis going through tooling right now. So uh, at different stages and correspond, like we're waiting on prototypes for brackets, other ones are in molds and some are being machined. So we have various stages of them in all times and uh, the system is completely full and people keep asking for them. So we've been very blessed and people are starting to notice it. And, you know, we picked a number that we would sell and uh, we've exceeded that number by four times the amount in, in, in what we thought we'd do a year. We did four times the amount in six months. So uh, we're, we're really lucky, and uh, that's what we got going. That is a home run, brother. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to see you guys are having that kind of success. So I'm very, very proud of you and very honored that we're a part of that with you as far as providing the gear that you put into those wonderful uh, enclosures. I noticed one of the comments in the feed, and maybe maybe you can answer this, and if you can, it's okay, but they were asking about the cost of the Audio Mini. So what is, an, are they all the same cost? Are they different costs? And what models are available currently? No, so all the Audio Minis are the exact same price. So they're $800 retail. Um, and when you look at what's in the market right now for that, that's a that's a steal. With when you when you look at the products, a lot of the things that are in the lower price point come with some cheap knockoff Chinese speakers and uh, really not the quality that you want. And a lot of them only have Bluetooth as well. They don't have the AM FM capabilities. And we found that a lot of people, especially in the utility side, like the Rangers, the Defenders, the Kawasaki Mule Pros, there's guys they don't want to deal with their cell phone. They don't want to be out there streaming music. Some of these are rural areas, and it's hard to get a good signal too. And so. 
we want to be able to pick up the FM radio or listen to the game or whatever when you're out there. And uh, so you get both of that. Um, we have two different really kind of shapes, if you will, if you look at our website. Uh, the new one is the Razor. It's a little narrower. Basically, it's based on the chassis. So if the chassis is really right. wide, like the Defender and the Ranger and the Mule Pro, then the big one goes and it's narrower. But on like the, uh, the Razors and the Talons, the frame rails are going to be a little bit narrower. And so this one... When we designed the current one that's for the Razor, we expect it to fit about uh, about 10 different models, so it's coming right now. That's fantastic. Uh, I know it's it, it's all relevant when it's in the show, but I had to pop this up from Devin. He's one of those guys that runs around, lets people know to hit the like button. Touch that like button. Just touch it, please. Thanks, Devin. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> so I've got a paper here right in front of me. And as we've kind of alluded to on the show, there will come a time when we'll do these uh, drawings live right on camera. There's actually going to be a front facing interface from Gleam that we'll be able to draw these live on the show and you'll see them as being drawn. But right now it's still in beta. It's sketchy. It doesn't work right. So there's a, an interface behind the scenes. It's not a front facing interface, but it's still a random uh, generating system to pull the winner. And we have pulled our winner for the Hoppy Audio Mini. And so this winner right here, he'll get to choose from which Audio Minis? Run through okay. all of them again real quick, JD, what models? Right now, currently available, we have the Can-Am uh, Defender, uh, and we have the Polaris uh, Rangers, we have the uh, Honda Pioneers, we have the Kawasaki Mule Pros, and then we also have the now the Razors, two, and, the mo and if we fit the application, it fits both the two and the four doors as well. And then we have the Talons, two and four doors, Kawasaki's, and many more. So if they win, they can pick any of those they want, or if we have one in development and they want to wait a little bit, they can have one of those. Okay, so everyone, you've heard it here first live on Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly. And JD, he's the man in charge of this giveaway. He knows what they have to offer. So those are the models you have to choose from. I'm going to announce our winner right now. If you are the winner, we're going to need you to reach out to social at kicker.com uh, with your pertinent information. That's going to be your shipping address, no P.O. box. We do need a phone number. Uh, that's so that UPS or USPS or FedEx or whoever is delivering the package to you, if there's any issue finding you or there's delivery problems, they can contact you. We do not use your phone number for any marketing purposes. We don't give it away, but we just have to have it for shipping. And uh, if it didn't ask it in the contest, we're going to want your shirt size because we're going to get you in on one of those. We're, we're almost down to the wire. There's not many left of the original uh, limited edition black unmasked live t-shirts, but we have some of those left and we're going to make you uh, wear one of those along with your prize from Hoppy. And I don't think we have to make you too hard. You're probably going to like it. So with that said, uh, socialatkicker.com is where you want to reach out to. And of course, Bill will reach the opposite direction because we have your information. And so with that said, drum roll, JD. The winner is from Goffstown, G-O-F-F-S-T-O-W-N. So hopefully I said that correctly. Goffstown, New Hampshire. And the winner is Jeremy with an I, J-E-R-I-M-Y Smith. Jeremy Smith from Goffstown, New Hampshire. And Sandy, I think we've got that there. You can probably scroll it across the bottom of the screen. There you go. Thank you, miss. Jeremy, you are the winner of the Kicker Performance Audio and Hoppy Industries combined giveaway of a Hoppy Audio Mini. Uh, thank everyone for participating in that contest. We had a great time doing that. Uh, look forward to more big contest, contests like that that run over a four or five week period of time. Uh, when we have great partners like JD, it's real easy to do something like that. And you know, JD, obviously we're, we're working with you a little bit on this giveaway, but you guys are picking up the bulk of this. I mean, they're gonna get it completely done, ready to go in a box. They just mount it and hook it up. It's gonna be easy, it's gonna be quick, and they're gonna have great sound. And so thank you for participating uh, on this drawing with us. We had a blast. Yeah, absolutely. We thank you guys for being a partner with us. And uh, if you ever want to follow us, guys, uh, on top of always following us on our social media, you can go join our mailing list. You can go to hoppyindustries.com and sign up for our mailing list. And all of our product launches are there. And we keep everybody posted on what we have. And we're going to have a pretty exciting, I would say every quarter, we're going to have an audio shade. And pretty much every 60 to 90 days, we're going to have a new mini because now the tools are built. So it's going to be pretty rapid fire. And we're just going to continue to add and we want the premium products and we want to be known as the best and everything is very easy. So just uh, stay tuned for a bunch of new stuff. And, you know, this was pretty fun to give away one here. 
Well, JD, keep us in mind because as you're moving forward with these new products that you're going to release, we'd love to have you on the show just to show some video you may have about it and talk about it. And, you know, maybe at some point in the future we'll do another contest. I can see us doing another one. So we'll see. Well, we got a good participation, and uh, a lot of people didn't know who Hoppy was. This helps us out. So uh, we're going to continue to develop, and we'll keep you posted on everything. Fantastic. J.D. Vay, uh, thank you and the entire staff over at Hoppy Industries for participating with us on this. You're a great partner. Love having you on board. Have a wonderful evening, and we will talk to you soon, man. All right, guys. Thank you all very much. Have a good one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is the first drawing for the night. We just wanted to go ahead and get that one out of the way here in the first part of the show because we know a lot of people have been waiting for five weeks to find out who the winner of that Hoppy Audio Mini is. And like I said, that is thanks to our partners over uh, at Hoppy Industries, uh, JD and all the crew over there. Thank you for working with us on that. And yeah, I think we'll do some more stuff with those guys in the future. There's a lot of positive feedback. A lot of people learned that contest and we had some fun doing it. And hey, it's another way to release product that's brand new here on Kicker Unmasked Live. So I think we're going to take advantage of that. So with that said, that's this piece of paper out of the way. We can move down my stack here. Something I, uh, and if you've got it early, you can put it up on the screen. If you don't have it because you had to move things around, that's okay, I understand, because I actually jumped out of order here a little bit. You know, we talked about just coming back from the Lake Havasu event. Want to put on your minds that there's another big event coming up for Kicker in June. And if I've got the dates right, and if, and if I've got them wrong, I apologize. But I think it's the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. It's, it's the last uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of June. And it's in Topeka, Kansas at the Heartland uh, Motor Speedway. And it is the Kicker Country. Country Stampede. Uh, we have been the title sponsor of that event now for it's either seven years or eight years. Uh, you have to take last year out of the running because you know everything got canceled, including your attention last year. Uh, but this year we're back. Everything's looking great that the event's on. Attendance is going through the roof. The tickets are selling out way in advance. So if you have any interest in listening to live country music performed on a, a literal million watt soundstage, and I've had an opportunity to listen to a lot of live music both indoors and outdoors, and the production crew that puts this stage together is top-notch, fantastic sounding stage. The performances are fantastic. Uh, you can go check it out. It's at countrystampede.com, and that will take you to the Kicker Country Stampede page. You can get all the information you want on it right there. But it is a big event for us. We're all looking forward to getting out in the field. Uh, Lake Havasu and Desert Storm was really our first one to get under the belts for 2021. And so hopefully we just keep moving forward with great positive results and we can get out in the field and do more of these live events, as well as the virtual events right here on Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly. And what's going to be cool is if we're out in the field during a Tuesday night show, we're going to broadcast live from out in the field. So wherever we're at, wherever we're doing, if we happen to be out in the field, we're going to figure out how to make it happen, and we're going to do a live broadcast on Tuesday night. So that'll be fun because you'll actually be in the environment with us, and it's going to be a really good time. So with that said, I do want to bring in my special guest, and I chose him. I, I, he was here last week, and he was here the week before, so I feel like I'm having him on the show a lot. But when it comes to the topic we've got on tap tonight, there is no one that I've seen in the world of YouTube, uh, even Facebook, as far as the discussion, because everyone calls him Mr. CCA. And it's a kind of an inside joke. It's humorous. But it would be uh, your boy and mine, Mr. Robert High Five Vega, and he is joining us live tonight. Robert, welcome to the show, sir. Yeah. How are you this evening? Doing good. What about you? I seen you got the memo. I, we, <laughs> I figured you know, if I'm the official co-host, I, I had to wear the, the, the gear, the merch, so... If I have you on next week, if you're on one more time, you are the official co-host because you've been here a lot. But I love having you. Oh, I love being on. That's why I'm always on. I had to make it for the three-peat three weeks in a row, and uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. So obviously tonight's topic, and, and you know, you, I've been on uh, your shows, 12 Volt Talk, Sound Advice, Reverse Polarity. I'm probably forgetting one because I think you do two streams a day now. You do. I know you're pulling back a little bit. It's probably so you can actually get a personal life because you've been streaming a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be on Sound Advice for three more weeks, and then I'm leaving that show in the capable hands of Nick and Justin DIY Audio Guy and Toyd's DIY Audio. But you'll be back as a special uh, co-host or guest on that show occasionally. At least that's my understanding. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, it's not no uh, bad blood. It's just, yeah, get a free day. I, I got other things I'm, I'm cooking, so I need a little extra time. Oh, you got something in the kitchen that's steaming up, eh? All right. Exactly. That, 
Well, what we've got to show on tonight, and, and we've got some, some samples, we've got some slides to show, and we've got a demo to go through. And tonight's topic is the most controversial one that I think exists on the internet right now, uh, is CCA, or what's called copper covered aluminum wire, and full 100% uh, OFC, or oxygen free copper, or even just 100% copper. And you know, it's a, it's a big debate. People go back and forth. Uh, I know that I've chimed in on some of your shows at night when people ask the questions, and I, I approach it from really a scientific angle. It's not about pricing, it's not about branding, it's about metallurgy, and it's about science, and it's about those realities. And so I figured there's no one better to have on the show tonight, I mean no one literally, than you to talk about this topic, because I know that you'd have your own insight into it, and of course having Mr. CCA on the show, that's yeah. it. Ooh, Ernie, Ernie, are you doing peaks? Ernie, <laughs> I gotta go back there and slap his hand. He's doing peaks. No peaks, Ernie. No peaks. Man, that's supposed to be a surprise. Okay, so we we do have a surprise plan. It's gonna be fun. So with that said, I'm gonna. I've got actually got a list here. I'm gonna pull it up because I need to work with Ernie in the back. And you know, sometimes I feel like Ernie and I are the handicapped, and we're fun to watch. So you know, like that goes. I want to cover some some basics right out of the gate before I get into power wire, which is the big one people want to talk about. And I just want to talk about some basics as far as how do you determine what you need to actually put a system together properly? Um, I, I kind of look at this as if you got a car and it's designed to run on 87 octane gas, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you put 90 or 91 or 93 in it. Typically, you don't get much more gas mileage, you don't get much more performance, but you do throw some more money into the tank. Um, you know, the engine is designed to operate on a certain octane gas. Uh, if it pings, you maybe you need to put in a little higher octane, but I know mine's, uh, I think it'll run on everything. I think it'll run on water if you stick it in there. It's got that eco symbol on it. I think it's designed to run on rain. But you want to run what you need, and if you put in more than you need, you're really just wasting money. And sometimes it's about jewelry, and sometimes people just want to buy the jewelry, but sometimes it's about, well, where do I got to go to get the performance I need, and I don't want to overspend or overbuy. I just want to make sure that I'm getting the performance I want out of my system. And if there's anyone that I think fits that bill, it's definitely you. You're definitely a person I see as you want to get the most performance for your dollar. You're not necessarily looking to just throw money at a solution. Right, for sure. And I got caught up in this whole CCA craze by a joke. So. I put out a video and I said, uh, this is why CCA is better than OFC because I, you know, I clickbait from, from now and then. And uh, sure. the whole video, every test I showed you, OFC was better, but I continued to praise CCA like CCA was winning every showdown. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be a funny joke. Little did I know it would get me branded uh, Hi-Fi CCA Vega. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I like it. I take it in stride, and I own it. You have to take it in stride. And I just noticed from the feed, apparently our feed out of here is a little sketchy right now. Uh, maybe it's gotten bad. Uh, I'm Tony, I promise, I'm not pirating movies on my laptop, as far as you're aware. <laughs> LimeWire. But... Uh, we are experiencing some severe weather in Oklahoma here tonight. Uh, rain, uh, thunderstorms, uh, possibility of flooding tonight, and of course those wonderful things called twisters and tornadoes. We're on a little bit of alert for that. So that could definitely be affecting our outbound feed, and I certainly apologize for that if that's affecting our data stream. So if you can hang in there with us, I'd certainly appreciate it, uh, but that would be why we're having issues. So I apologize. Apologize, apologize. So I'm going to bring back up. So if Ernie, if you can, I'm going to go through the list I've got up here. The first thing I want to go over with uh, my boy Robert here is bring up uh, slide number one that says speaker wire chart. And you'll probably have to take it full screen so we can both see it pretty good. And this here, the reason I wanted to bring this up is, you know, the first question is before we get into power wire, the first thing is speaker wire. And, and I know a lot of you guys out there, you'll run garden hoses to your speakers, and that's because you know, you're building systems to float bricks and babies, and I get that. But if you're just building an audio system and you just want to use the right size wire to make sure the system sounds good and you're maximizing the performance of your amplifier, this is probably one of the best charts I could come across. Uh, this is kind of a system I've used for years to determine things. And what you look at is when it comes to speaker wire, what matters is how long is the run, what impedance is the speaker? And for, uh, I didn't want to alter the chart, so please just ignore there at the far right where it says 70 volt speaker because that's not anything we're referring to. That's a complete, that's more like pro sound PA work, so just ignore that to the right. But we're looking at four ohm speaker and eight ohm speaker. And you can see here, so you can see at the top, like just take the four ohm speaker, it's got 11%, 21%, and 50%. And what that means, that is how much 
power loss you're going to get over the, that length of cable with that gauge of wire. So for example, if you go down the chart there, and let's just look at 16 gauge. 16 gauge wire is good for a 27 foot run, and at 27 foot, you're only losing 11% of your voltage from the amplifier to your speaker into a four ohm speaker, and that means you're gonna lose about half a dB of output. Um, if you go on out there, and let's say you took that 16 gauge and you ran it 55 feet, then you'd be looking at about a 21% reduction, which would be about a dB of loss in output. And then you go all the way out there, and if you're gonna run 16 gauge, 185 feet, which I don't think you're doing in your car. If you are, you're running a lot of loops. But if you were, you'd notice that you would get a 50% reduction in the power that actually reaches your speaker. It'd be a three dB reduction in output. So this chart right here, you know, people ask, what, what gauge wire do I need? If you just want to run 14 gauge wire or you just want to run 12 gauge wire, you certainly can. There's nothing wrong with doing that if you want to. But if you look at this chart, you can see what is a realistic expectation for how far can I run this gauge of wire and then how much loss am I gonna get? And at the end of the day, that's the science behind it is I'm simply sending an AC signal down a wire how much resistance is there and how much signal am I gonna lose at the end? Now, once you get beyond that, it does get into the, the, the voodoo but real science territory of there are other th properties of wire. There's, there's capacitance, there's inductance, and there's resistance. And a wire, if it's a twisted pair wire, it can exhibit uh, inductance. And then just wires running beside each other depending on their size and the insulation properties and the how far apart they are, you can actually get into capacitance. So capacitance is like a capacitor. A capacitor acts like a uh, high pass filter. An inductor is inductance. It's a low pass filter. So wire construction can alter the frequency response. But when you start talking about the L and the C part of LCR, the most important aspect is, is R. You want to make sure you're running the right size gauge wire so that you have acceptable loss at the end when you get into your speaker. Now, if you're into the L and the C part, those are measurable. There is gear that you can use to measure those characteristics. Uh, but I think that you're going to find for the 95% the of us out there who are just trying to put together a solid system that sounds good, the gauge the resistance, the amount of loss is the number one important factor over L and C because you really got to get into some exotic cables where L and C start becoming a critical factor. So I like that chart because it kind of gives you an idea, here's the amount of wire that I need to run for a specific length to make sure I don't get as much voltage drop as I want. Now, again, if you want to run bigger, if you want to run 91 octane gas in your car that takes 87, you can do it. When it comes to that, I'm kind of that way. I've done systems where I look at the chart and it comes up and says 16 gauge will be just fine, but in my heart, I just feel better running 14. I'm probably not getting a lick of performance audibly difference at the end, but my brain just feels better about it. And I'm sure you run into those scenarios too, Rob, but that's, that's the first thing I want to touch on is how do you gauge wire out of an amplifier, and it's really what gauge is it, and how long is it going, and into what impedance speaker is it driving to determine what the loss is going to be. Right, for sure. And then, it, you know, you also may have to factor in how you're going to get two pairs of 12-gauge wires through your door, because I've seen people run 12-gauge wire to tweeters. And uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of wire to put through these doors, and especially the ones you have to pin out now just to get the wire through. Absolutely, and it's you know sometimes whether it's just your heart is sold on it, or you like the color of the wire, you like the look of the wire, or a salesman did a really good job on selling you on the wire. I mean, obviously, Monster Cable did a great job in the '80s branding everyone with it's got to be 12 gauge or it's not real speaker cable. You know, Monster Cable really kind of made 12 gauge wire the thing. But I just want to boil it down to the sciences. It's real easy. Just grab that chart. Uh, you look at that chart, how far am I running it, and it'll tell you what gauge you need. And in a case like you're talking about, I, I cannot agree with you more, Robert, is if you've got to take pins out of some of these modern doors and run your own speaker wire through independently, you want to use the right gauge, but you don't want to run a 12-gauge wire through there because that becomes a nightmare. For sure. I mean, it's uh, almost impossible in some of them. And as you can see from that chart, uh, in most cases in a car, 16 gauge is going to be fine. Running from your full range amplifier to any speaker in your car, I don't think you're going to have any length of cable over 27 feet long in a car. So you're fully acceptable at 16. If you just feel like you want a little bump, 14 obviously makes you feel a bit better. 12 gauge, it, yeah, even I, even though they're short runs, I always use 12 gauge for my subwoofers, even though by the math you really probably don't need it, but I just feel better running 12. But I'd like to lay the math out first and understand if you choose anything other than that, it's just you trying to feel good about your decision. It's not necessarily that the science is aligning up with you.
Yeah, and I, I'm the same way. I always run a minimum of 12 gauge to subs, and I typically run 14 gauge to mids and 16 to tweeters. And that there's I, there's only thought behind that is I bought all 16, 14, 12 gauge wires, so this is what I'm gonna sure. <laughs> so Ernie jumped the gun on me. Ernie, bring that next chart up, which would be number two, and go ahead and take it full screen. So now we talked about speaker wire. So that's how you get the power out of your amplifier into your speakers. And there's so many variations of this chart available on the internet that you can pick it, and they all tend to say the same thing. But it's the same premise. Uh, you pick your power wire based on how much current are you going to flow through that power wire and how long is that power wire going to be. So, for example, you know, at zero to four feet, if you're just running four feet of wire, you know, you can run 250 to 300 amps of current safely through a piece of four gauge if it's less than four feet long. But now step up to four to seven feet, you know, you pop right into seven gauge, get out there to a realistic length if you're going to run that kind of current from, you know, a battery to an underseat or to back of a car, 10 to 13 or 13 to 16, you're up into one aught category. And people will ask this question, well, it's the same amount of current. Why does the wire gauge get bigger? And it has everything to do with the longer the run of wire, the more resistance there is. If you lengthen a wire, there's more resistance. And so when you do a longer run, you have to increase the size of the wire. You have to go to a bigger gauge wire so that there's lower resistance so that the amount of current and voltage flowing through, you don't get the drop at the end of the cable. And so a chart like that is great for that. And, and understand that chart, I'm, I'm gonna say this, it doesn't matter if you're using CCA or copper to use that chart although it completely 100% matters, and you'll see a why here in a minute when we get into some testing, but that chart is based on someone using 100% oxygen-free copper because in the world of uh, power wire, uh, you obviously there's CCA, which is copper-covered aluminum, which means it's an aluminum core, and it just has a coating of copper around it, and then 100% copper is just that, it's 100% copper. The reality when you compare those two, and that's why that chart, uh, you, could you use it for both? Well, some people think you can, and, and in some ways you probably could, but really that's based on copper, and on the resistivity scale, copper is considered a one. It's considered uh, a no loss, no gain conductor. Uh, a lot of people think gold uh, is actually a better conductor than uh, copper, and it's really not, uh, which is kind of crazy. But you know, when you look at copper, it is. And then aluminum or aluminum alloys, those all fall well below copper and so far below that most of those aluminum or aluminum alloys are like a 0.59 to a 0.61 on the resistivity scale. So from a pure science standpoint, not, not branding, not cost, not your wallet talking to you, but pure science, is aluminum as good of an electrical conductor as copper? Gauge for gauge, the answer is absolutely not. It is not as good a conductor. And Ernie, if you could bring up, uh, bring up slide number three real quick. I want to talk about that one first. Bring it up full screen. And this kind of alludes to what I was talking about there. Those two pictures on the left, that represents a piece of copper and then a piece of aluminum. And you can see they're the same gauge, they're the same size. And if you look at copper versus aluminum, the, the aluminum has bigger resistance and has bigger resistivity, which means it's going to create more heat and it's going to have more drop at the end of the cable versus a copper wire. Now, if you have twice the area, so if I take and I go from, say, a 14 gauge and I go up to a 10 gauge, I would have twice the area, which would actually cut the resistance in half. So we were kind of talking at the beginning there when you look at CCA wire and copper wire and you know one's a one on the resistivity scale and the other one is down around 0.59. That means if you ran CCA that's twice as big as copper, you'd almost get the same performance of copper. But if you t twice the area, you have half the resistance and then we talked about again, if you got twice the length, you get twice the resistance. So Ernie, go ahead and move to slide number four for me if you will. I want to uh, buzz through and get to that next one. And here we go. So you can make wire out of anything. I mean, wire can be made out of various materials. And you can see there in the number one position with the highest conductivity, uh, and they call it 147.80% uh, of gold. So gold is kind of like sitting there, and then it's how much better than gold is this? Well, silver conducts electrical current 147.80% better than gold. And then right beneath that, 
there's our good friend copper. And so copper is coming in, it's 140%, 140.5% over gold. And then beneath gold is good old aluminum, and aluminum is 88.5% of gold. So if you look at it being that, it's, it's much, much lower on the scale. And of course, there's other materials there, you know, zinc, brass, nickel, uh, tin, you go through the whole process there. Uh, but those are all materials that you can use to make wire out of, nickel. Um, but you know, in our world, lots of copper, lots of aluminum. Silver wire is usually reserved for people who are esoteric, uh, silver plating, or you've heard of silver solder. A lot of times they'll use silver solder when they're soldering on the ends of an RCA cable or something because solder is very, very conductive. Silver solder is very expensive, but it is a great uh, material to use to solder from your cabling system to your RCA connectors or your XLRs or whatever you may be using. So that is kind of a, a look at the different materials you can look at. And again, th this show is not about brand. It's not about anything else. It's about the science of wire and metallurgy and what it means in the performance, the real world performance that you're going to get out of a piece of wire. So moving on over to that, I, I know I don't want to keep Robert out of here, but I want to move to the next slide, Ernie, number five. Go ahead and bring that one up. And this is, and I brought this one up for a reason. This is a chart that shows you the gauge of wire, and it shows you what the ohms per foot or per kilometer, if, you, if that's what you prefer, but how much resistance is in that wire. And it goes through a bare hard drawn, bare medium draw, bare annealed. Annealed is what we use a lot of. And then the one at the end, I want to pay attention because that's tinned annealed. And that is what Kicker uses in all of our power wire, whether it's for the car or whether it is for the boat, uh, the marine world. Uh, we use tinned annealed 100% copper. And the reason we use tinning is the one thing that copper can do is copper can corrode when it's exposed to the environment and you know things like that. It'll turn green. It'll do that nice patina on there. And by tinning it, it prevents that or minimizes that and makes it a whole lot more durable when you're talking about any kind of corrosion from water and more specifically if you're talking looking at salt water. And so this just kind of goes through uh, and maybe we can put all these, maybe we'll put all these graphs together for you guys and we'll post it up on the Kicker website on, on Facebook or something so you can come back and look at these. I think it'd be good information for you to have. But everything we're talking about here, again, is coming from a science angle, not, not a brand angle. So I, I want to keep driving that point home here because that's what's important about this. And so when you go from uh, the copper, the ohms for fur, Ernie, bring up uh, slide number six. Okay, and then this, and I, I brought this slide on board, Robert, because I thought this is, what, this is important that people understand this. And this isn't hard. If you look at an 18-gauge wire, and this chart's at the left, it's an 18-gauge wire. If you go over there, look at the cross-sectional area in AWG, or you can look at it in SAE area. And that is actually measuring the surface area of the wire. And here's what's interesting. Remember we had that slide up that just talked about if you double the size of your wire, you cut the resistance in half. Well, here you can see an 18 gauge wire is approximately 1500 in the surface area. But you bump up to 14 gauge wire and you're up to 3700. So a 14 gauge wire is basically twice the size or a little bit bigger than twice the size of an 18 gauge wire. So basically as you step through the AWG system, you can see that when you skip a size and go to the next one, you're basically uh, getting a lot more surface area than what you had to begin with. And it kind of ramps up as you go through, but this is what you're really looking at. If, and we said, you know, if you use twice as much aluminum wire, you can do the same thing as you do with copper. Uh, and you can, you can do it safely, but you gotta use twice as much. And that's why, whether it's in gauge or whether it's a number of runs, you have to use more aluminum or more CCA to do the exact same thing that a smaller piece of true copper will do. Uh, and do you have anything to add to that? I mean, I thought this would be a good break point for you to come in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, so you have to remember that any losses that you have in your wire, you don't, act, you lose it in power, but you keep that and you gain it in heat. So all that power is going somewhere, no matter if it makes it to your amp or not. If you're losing power, you're gaining it in heat. And in my video, I showed that, in fact, the wire was much hotter in the four gauge CCA versus, uh, actually, it was kicker four aught that I used in the test, or uh, not four aught, four gauge, $10. Four gauge in the test? 
Yep. And so the last slide, uh, or the second to last slide, Ernie, if you'll pop up slide number seven real quick, and I just want to go over these characteristics. And kind of this slide here I love because it kind of boils it down to copper versus aluminum. And you can see you, you got copper and aluminum, the tensile strength, uh, same for conductivity, the weight, obviously copper weighs a lot more uh, than aluminum does. And I can tell you from if we have some stuff you'll see later, you'll see why I say it's heavier. Uh, Cross-section for same conductivity. So if you had a piece of copper as, at a 100, it takes 156% more cross-sectional area for aluminum to do the exact same thing. So you have to use more aluminum. There's just no way around it. Uh, four gauge CCA is not the same thing as four gauge copper. It just is not. Uh, and this is the science behind it. It's not branding, it's science. Um, and then the resistance you can see, and here's why you were talking about heat, Vega, and here's where it is. You know, you're looking at copper, you know, it's 10.6, as far as resistance in ohms, and then you go over there to aluminum, it's 18.52. I mean, resistance equals heat. I mean, if you draw any type of current or voltage through a wire and you got more resistance, you're gonna get more heat out of it. And so it's, it's almost double, uh, as you can see on there, and that's huge. And what, what we're trying to get, and you'll see from these, we got a demo here we're gonna show you, and then, you know, maybe another one, we don't know. But it's, it's about how much current are you gonna pull through how long of a piece of wire you're gonna do it through, and how much heat can you safely dissipate through that wire before you melt the insulation. Uh, I've seen cars where the insulation is melted through, uh, sitting on the floor mats of cars and caught cars on fire. I've seen it where it's melted through in the engine compartments and caused fires in, under the hood in cars. And this isn't a scare tactic, it's just reality. Uh, if you exceed the capacity of any wire and its insulation, you're going to burn that insulation. And once that wire is free and hot and ready to go, you're going to get into a situation where it could be uh, lethal, deadly, and definitely uh, a fire can happen. I think that, you know, a lot of people don't pay attention to that. You're, aside from the wire, your connections are very important. If you're not crimping your connections properly or you're not putting set screws in properly, uh, sometimes, you know, ferrules can help with that. But that a lot of issues where you see the, the melted fuse, fuse blocks, a lot yes. of times that's from a poor connection. It's not the wire's fault in particular, but it's the connection that was made that connected to any connection that you have is a weak spot or a poor connection is a weak spot and it's gonna build heat. Exactly, and, and the other thing when it comes to CCA wire versus copper wire, you know, one of the things you're dealing with is aluminum does not solder well at all. And so you're really not gonna get good penetration when you're soldering into the core of that wire because it's not gonna to stick to that aluminum or bond to that aluminum like it does to the copper core or to the full copper that's on the other side. And the other downside to aluminum is aluminum oxidation and aluminum oxidation is, uh, doesn't conduct, conduct current. So aluminum oxide oxidation, it's not conductive. So you're actually, over time, as it oxidizes it, it actually becomes non-conductive. It becomes protected. So, so those are other realities that you gotta go with. You definitely, uh, connectivity is the key there, and I agree with you on that 100%, Robert. Uh, you, you know, you wanna make sure you're crimping them properly, you wanna make sure you're soldering properly, you wanna make sure you're heat shrinking properly so that you're keeping that, that joint uh, away from the elements and so that it can be a good solid joint that won't corrode or degrade over time. I agree with you on that completely, 100%. Yeah, for sure. You don't want, you know, half of your one out wire folded back as you jam it into a terminal and, and tighten it. No, not at all. And then last but not least, Ernie, if you could bring up slide number eight real quick. I wanted to bring this one up and this is, this is a pretty cool chart that I wanted to bring up. And what it basically shows you that is in the world of wire, you can use for the contest. Uh, leave the chart up, Ernie, but uh, my, my man, Tim, let me let you know that there's 10 minutes left on tonight's contest for entry. So if you haven't entered yet, go to kicker.fun forward slash full spec, F-U-L-L-S-P-E-C to enter the contest tonight. You got about 10 minutes for that. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that heads up. But you can see here, if you look through that chart, the thing that's pretty cool is, like if you go to 12 gauge there, first off, they don't even rate aluminum in a 14 gauge. If you're gonna use 14 gauge, they insist that you go to a copper wire, and they rate that for 15 amps. But when you go to 12 gauge, you know, they say 12 gauge is good for a 20 amp circuit, and you come over here to aluminum 12 gauge, it's derated to a 15 amp circuit. And uh, we'll put these assets together so you guys can look at these later off show here. But if you can see that, aluminum has to be derated because it cannot carry the same amount of current, safely gauge for gauge as it can compared to copper. 
Um, there's, there's pros and cons. I mean, back in the 70s and 80s, there was a lot of aluminum that went into home wiring. Uh, they got out of that pretty darn quick because one of the other problems with aluminum is its expansion and contraction rates are significantly higher than copper. And what was happening is it was loosening up the screws on uh, light switches and at plug-in terminals in your house. And when those uh, connections would get loose, it would start arcing and sparking. And there you go, you have a house fire. So uh, this is another great chart that just kind of shows you uh, aluminum versus copper. And I think, I think the thing I want to drive home on this, uh, you can take that chart away, Ernie, if you want to. That's fine. Good with it. The thing I want to drive home with this is we're not here on the show to tell you aluminum is bad. Uh, you can do aluminum bus bars. You can do aluminum distribution blocks. I mean, a lot of those things are out there. It does save you weight. It does save you cost over brass or copper, if that was the way you're going to go. But you also have a lot more cross-sectional area there. You can get into a lot more bulks, and, that, and that's where you can safely flow the amounts of current you're dealing with in aluminum. When it comes to wire, though... I don't know that there's any good reason to use CCA over copper ever other than it's your pocketbook telling you it's the right thing to do. Because from an application use standpoint, longevity, corrosion, resistance, solderability, everything that comes along for ride resistance, there, there's no benefit to CCA. The only benefit to CCA is cost, but I think we're going to show you here in a minute that if, if you cheap out on the wire, you actually end up you know, cheating yourself because you don't get full performance. Yeah, for sure. You Your system starts with a base and wherever your base is, is going to allow you to be, to how good your system can be to the maximum uh, potential. And if you limit that right from the jump, then you could have a problem later if you say you go with four gauge CCA. Now you're wanting to add a thousand watt amp. That's not going to be a good combo with, where if you had four gauge OFC, you could run a thousand watt amp safely. So, absolutely. And I look at wire. I mean, a lot of people. I, I say this because I've I've been on that side of the fence as a person buying wire because you had if you buy an amplifier, you, it's not like the amp gets its stuff free. You got to have wire to hook it to power. You got to have wire to hook it to your speaker. So I've been the guy buying wire. And I've been the guy selling wire. And unfortunately, what happens, I think, in a lot of cases is people look at, okay, I want this amplifier, and I've saved up my money, and this is the amplifier I want. And they buy it, and then they find out, oh, you mean I need wire? Oh, and I need fuses? And oh, I need a distribution block? Or any of the other things they need? And they feel like it's a gotcha. It's like, okay, I saved up all my money to get this, but I didn't know I had to have all this to make it work. So they look for the least common denominator in price. What's the cheapest way I can get out of this and get my amp to work? Because that's what I focused on. That's what I saved my money on. And what people really need to do on the front side is understand when you go in, you've got to put in good wire to get all the performance out of the good amplifier you bought. And if you don't, you're not going to get everything you paid for. Yeah, you don't, you know, full disclosure, I am running CCA right now in the Honda, but I, I do it because I have a YouTube channel. I like to test stuff. So I've been doing, you know, random tests on it every three, six months, just seeing what kind of shape it's in. So that way I can let people know. So that is truly the only reason I'm, I've ever run CCA. And a matter of fact, uh, when I first got into cardio, I didn't know there was such a thing as CCA and it was not advertised or anything because in the 90s, it really wasn't a thing. Just wire was wire and it was right. copper. You know, they've even done it on the home side. I mean, if, if you're into, and I am into that too, is when it comes to buying RG6 cable. So if you're going to run your own cable for, you know, satellite TV or coax TV or cable TV or even use it for low uh, level signal, like running a subwoofer run, you can buy... CCS, which is copper covered steel. So it's RG6 cable where the inner conductor is actually steel and it's covered with copper, or you can buy RG6 that's full 100% copper. And it's the same thing, it all boils down to price. You can buy the CCS for 60 to 80 bucks a spool, or you can buy the 100% copper for 120 to 160 bucks a spool, depending on what you're looking at. And they claim that the copper covered steel sweeps out to three gigahertz and it handles full bandwidth and all that, and, and maybe it does, but I've seen performance cases in my work, 100% copper just works better. So it, it is a cost decision. You've got to decide, are you willing to take the chance on things like that or not? Someone here brought up a comment. I do want to address this one. I thought that was pretty interesting. They say here, why use a CCA voice coil then if it's so bad? Well, 
A CCA voice coil isn't necessarily good or necessarily bad, but in the design of a speaker, you might want to use a CCA wire to save weight. If you're trying to lighten up the mass of the entire speaker, you might go to a copper covered aluminum wire to save mass on the driver. You just have to make sure that you use the proper gauge wire because obviously if it's not true copper, you gotta get more in there, more gauge wire so it'll handle the current, and you're not pulling 80 amps of current through a voice coil. It's a little bit different story there. Uh, CCA and voice coil is a little different. It's used for weight of the entire operating suspension of the structure because if you're doing a three inch voice coil and let's say it's four inches long, there's a lot of weight in a fully copper coil versus CCA. You can design a CCA coil that'll give you decent performance, but you also have to deal with the realities of everything else we talked about. So it's all, it's all about design. Uh, we're really focused on power wire delivery here when we're talking about CCA wire. Uh, but yeah, you can use CCA and voice coils and there are reasons for it. So yeah. well, plus you got forced that. air cooling, so there's there's no worries. Exactly. So with that said, I want to try to get there because we got some good things here in the show I want to get to. So what I want to do at this point, and, and Rob, I don't want you to leave me. I want you to stay on board here because um, we're going we're gonna to do a test here, and then it's going to get a little sketchy. But don't go away. I promise you it's oh. going to be worth it. I, I live for sketchy. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's Kicker Unmasked Live, so if we can make right. something sketchy live, we're going to do it. So... <laughs> I'm gonna step back here and hopefully my boy Tim on the camera can get what he needs to get in here on view. So this display, and I don't know if any of you have seen this display before or not, but this is a display that Kicker put together, oh, it's, we've had it for probably four or five years now at this point. And basically our guys, our engineers built an, a dyno. And what it does is it measures the output power from this amplifier. And this is a KX400.1 monoblock amplifier. So what's going on here is we have a battery, we have a power supply and we have a 50 hertz tone generator that's feeding a signal into this amplifier. When you flip this switch, there's just a couple of big, big solenoid relays in the back and what it's doing is when I flip it to competitor wire, it's simply getting the power from the battery through 17 feet of CCA wire, eight gauge CCA. And then when you flip the switch up to kicker wire, the relays in the back click and it pulls that same power from that same battery through 17 feet of kicker power wire. Now they're both grounded through a uh, kicker. There's a kicker wire here that's short that goes down to the battery. It's about three or four feet long for ground. So it is a, a solid copper ground from the amplifier down. So all we're changing when we flip the switch is, is the amplifier pulling its B positive through 17 feet of CCA or is it pulling it through 17 feet of, of true copper wire? And what you see going on at the display right here, this is the voltage at the battery. So this voltmeter volt is hooked up directly to the battery. This voltmeter is hooked up directly at the amplifier. So what you can see here is voltage drop. How much power am I losing from the battery to the amplifier over that 17 feet of wire? And then here, the thing that everybody's interested in, this is what's my power output? How much power is my, my amplifier making? So understand in this demo, we're not adjusting the gain, we're not adjusting the output from the sine wave generator, that's all fixed. All we're doing is changing wire. We're either using this wire or we're using this wire. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put it on the kicker wire. So this is just, and understand that this isn't about brand, but this is 100% OFC tin plated copper. So when I flip the switch up, maybe you heard the relays through my mic, and you can see that right now we've got 12.65 volts at the amplifier. We've got 13.39 volts at the battery. So we're sitting there at a, about a little over half a volt a drop, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 in that range. And you can see the amplifier is making 466 watts of power. So that's the 50 hertz sine wave fed into the amplifier and we're pulling that current or voltage through the kicker wire. Now when I flip the switch, all that's gonna change is the relay's gonna kick over and we're gonna draw power through the uh, uh, CCA wire. So here we go. Now what I want you to notice is voltage at the battery is still that 13.44 range, but look what the voltage at the amplifier is. The voltage has dropped to 11.15. Voltage drop equals two things. More heat being dissipated through the wire and less voltage and current to the amplifier. If I have less voltage and current to the amplifier, what happens to my power? It drops as well. And you can see the amplifier is making 366 watts of power. 
in this example right here, if this amp was in your car and you were playing this amplifier at full tilt boogie, which I'm pretty sure most everyone in this feed plays their stuff pretty close to full tilt boogie, especially with the music they're playing, this is what you would experience. You would be buying a 400 watt amplifier and only getting about 360 watts out of it with CCA wire. Whereas if you simply put in 100% oxygen free copper, that amplifier delivers 463 watts of power. 462, 463, it's bouncing around right there. That is a significant power drop in your amplifier. So, you know, let's just say you decided I want a kicker 400 watt amplifier. Now, of course, our amplifiers all make more power than we claim they do. Some, not, not gobs more, but they do make more than what we rate them at. We want to make sure you get every bit of power you paid for when you buy a kicker amplifier. So even though this amplifier is rated at 400 watts, you're seeing it's doing 460 some watts, okay? But if you use the competitor wire, you're not even getting a 400 watt amplifier. You're getting a 365, 367 watt amplifier. And I don't know if it'll, if I can stand here, maybe Tim will let me do it long enough. I th when I have it, it shows, I just stand there and hold it. And you'll notice that this number, I'm on the competitor wire. You see it's at 366. And I wish I had my a, a FLIR in here, I'd show you. But the wire, it's getting hot. It's getting warm to the touch. And you can see the power has dropped down now to 364. And I'm just gonna keep holding it here for a few more seconds so you guys can see what's going on here. And it's getting even hotter. It's gaining even more heat. There, 363, it's down to 364, it's dropping down to 363 now. So the longer you pull the power through the wire and try to get that full 400 watts out of your amplifier, this wire is going to get warmer and warmer and this power output is gonna drop more and more. You're going to keep losing power. So you, first off, you're not getting full performance out of the amplifier, you're not getting all the watts you paid for, and as you're playing it, if you're trying to make your 400 watt amp play 400 watts, this is what's gonna happen. You see I'm down to 361 watts now, and that's gonna to continue to fall. If I just hold this here, and this wire is gonna to continue to get warmer and warmer. I mean, I wish I had a meter here right now, but it's up to about 100 degrees right now. I'd say it's about 100, 101 degrees is what it feels like. 358 on the power, and it just keeps on dropping. So I'm gonna let that off go right there. If I do the same thing on the kicker wire, I could hold it here, we could talk for the same amount of time, and what you'll see is, besides the fact I've got more power coming out of the amplifier, it stays there, because the copper wire is less resistive, you're not losing that much voltage from the, the battery to the amplifier, you're not dissipating your power in heat on your wire, you're dissipating your power in your amplifier to make wattage. And there, there's no gimmicks, there's no tricks. If you're ever in the Stillwater area and want a hands-on display of this uh, demo, you're more than welcome to get one. It is simply just switching between two different wires that are feeding the amplifier uh, its 12 volt power. And I don't know, have you seen this demo before, Robert? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're losing 100 watts of, of gravy there that you might want for your subs, <laughs> you know? And what did it cost you, maybe 10, 15 extra bucks? I love that you put it as gravy. That's awesome. That's my new favorite phrase from you is gravy. I like, <laughs> I like a little gravy too. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't like gravy? But you can see I'm sitting here holding it and it's still holding 459, 460, 459, 460. And the wire, I mean, it's room temperature or less. There's, there's no heat going through this wire. So in an extreme example of this, if you had an amplifier that was bigger than this amplifier, Let's say you bought an 800 watt amplifier and you were on a budget and you just had to, I gotta get wire but I don't have any money to buy wire so I'm just gonna buy the least expensive thing I can find and you happen to get an eight gauge CCA kit, well you're gonna be pulling double the amount of current that I'm pulling with this amplifier through there. This wire will get hot enough to melt that insulation and it will cause, hey, looky there, hey Ernie. Oh. <laughs> Boop. Here, I'm gonna let me put back on here, see what I get here. It's our, uh, you know, whatever you call it, the temperature gauge here. Okay, right now that wire is at 107 degrees. 100, it's 109 degrees, it's climbing as I, 111 degrees. I'll move to another spot on it here. There's see if you can burn it down, burn it down during the live stream, <laughs> that'd be awesome. 113 degrees right there. 113 degree, 114, 115, and it's climbing, it's still climbing. 116, 119, 120. And when I say it's climbing, I mean, I'm serious. I'm, I'm sitting here watching on the meter. It's at 120, 120.5, 121.5. It's continuing to climb, 122. So, and I'm not even getting all the power that my amplifier is designed for. So 
guys, we're not here to, to, to brand bash anyone who makes wire. We're not here to, to brand bash if it's very flexible or not flexible enough. That's entirely up to you how you are comfortable running your wire through your car. But probably the most important thing I can tell you about this is, even if you said, bah humbug, I don't want the 100 watts my amplifier could give me, it's not safe to use CCA, especially undersized CCA, on a system because you can literally put yourself into a position where you can have a catastrophic fire in your car. Uh, and this is a prime example of it right here. So this, this is just one example. We, we take this uh, demo on the road with us. We use it at uh, SEMA and CES when we go to those type of shows. And we show people the difference on that. And I did notice some people in the chime, there were some guys that said, yeah, I have kicker wire and it's awesome, it's flexible, it's this, that, and the other. Uh, I had one other guy in the chime say, man, it's kind of expensive. Um, we are not the cheapest wire out there. I'll just be straight up. When it comes to the kicker wire, we are not the least expensive wire option out there. We are one of the most flexible. Uh, our strand count is, is extremely high. It's 100% copper. And the cool part about kicker wire, maybe Timmy can, as I'm playing with it here, he's trying to zoom out. But all of our wire is tin plated. So it's 100% copper with tin plated. Plating, so the corrosion resistance on this is as good as you're going to get. We at Kicker are so confident. I mean, we only offer uh, copper wire, 100% copper wire or 100% copper with tin plating. And we're so confident in this that if you buy a Kicker amplifier and you buy a Kicker wire kit for it at the same time, yeah, you, you might pay a little more for a Kicker wire kit if you're getting a Kicker amp, but the cool part about it is you're getting great wire, number one, but number two, we extend the warranty out to three years on the amplifier. So you're kind of buying an extended warranty, I guess, but what it really boils down to is we can see the statistics, the numbers that come back through uh, warranty returns and things like that. If an amplifier is hooked up with the right gauge wire, if it's properly grown, and it's getting fed the current once, they live. They just don't have a problem. If you have an amplifier that's using undersized wire or if it's using wire that's not true spec, which that was one of the words we talked about today, which you know some people say it's four gauge and it's really not four gauge. If you take it out and measure the wire, it's like, that's not four. It's four gauge worth of insulation, but it's almost like that commercial from the 80s. Where's the beef? It's like, where's the wire? Uh, there's a lot of wire out there that it's not true American wire gauge standard. Uh, this is true standard. It's 100% copper. It's tin. And we're so confident that we extend the warranty on our amps because we know the amplifier is going to survive. Uh, amplifiers starve for voltage and current. It kills them. It really does. And you know, so here's an example. And, and brand doesn't matter, but this is an example of copper covered aluminum. And uh, you can see if you look at the end, you can see all that silver that's kind of in the cutaway there. That is the aluminum core of the wire. And then of course on the outside, it looks all shiny like copper. And it is because it's, uh, it is an aluminum core with a plating of copper over the outside. And uh, this is just one example. So we've done this display before. People go, oh yeah, that's just eight gauge. That's not big wire. I wanna see big wire. I mean, that, that, that test doesn't mean anything. It's, it's eight gauge. Well, that test means a lot to someone who needs an eight gauge wire to run their system. So what we've done is we've got a little surprise on tap and it's gonna take us about 30 seconds to get over there and show it. So if you'll just stay on tap with us, Hi-Fi, uh, yeah, we're gonna yeah. actually uh, move out of the studio here to a lab that Ernie kind of gave a sneak peek at earlier. And we've got a couple more demos we wanna show you and everyone tuned in. I think you're gonna enjoy them. All right, well, while you do that, I could kind of talk about people getting confused with tin wire uh, when they see a copper clad aluminum wire that looks like copper, but then they see Absolutely. a tin OFC wire, which is actually 100% copper. So there is a difference there. And you can tell instantly if you take one piece of CCA wire and one piece of copper wire, the copper wire is going to weigh almost double. So if you pick up a big, thick wire and it's pretty light, it's most likely CCA, unless you're just super strong like Kip. <laughs> so hopefully you can still hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. So what Tim and I are doing, we are coming into, and when I say a lab, I do literally mean a lab. We've got, a, it's an area here. Uh, you remember when you came for the tour, Robert, this is the room that we showed you where uh, Wade does all the testing on amplifiers and electronics uh, for QA, QC. That was yep. right on the other side of the studio. That's where Tim and I are moving off to. Hey, there we are. Hello, everyone. So we actually set up a camera over here in the lab and we kicked Wade out this afternoon and said, Wade, we want to commandeer your area because we want to do some interesting tests. And he said, sure. I said, he said, I've got all my work done for the day. You guys can have the lab early. So we took it over from him. So what we've got in here, hopefully Tim will get in here. 
We've got a rack of Astron power supplies. There's six or seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So there's 350 amps of current on tap. So we have plenty of current and voltage to run this test. And what we've got on this test bench is we have a kicker uh, KXA 2400.1 amplifier. And as far as how it's connected right now, right here on the side of the bench, this is, and if you're not familiar with them, it's called an Anderson connector. And an Anderson connector is a very, very uh, high current connector that you can use to plug and unplug uh, and run huge amounts of current through them. They do it safely and effectively. Uh, so this Anderson connector right here, I think the continuous duty rating on it is either 175 or 200 amps, and then I think peak duty rating on it's over 300 amps of current. And so what it allows uh, Wade to do on a daily basis is he can plug and unplug here whatever gauge wire he needs for whatever amplifier he's putting under test. So if he needs eight gauge or four gauge or one odd, he can change that. But what we created today, we took and did two, we actually have four sets of cables here. There's four sets. And we've got a, a run of kicker one aught. We have a run of kicker four gauge. And then we have a run of CCA one aught and we have a run of CCA four gauge. And the brand of the CCA, I'm not gonna tell you, don't even ask, because it doesn't matter. We're not talking brand to brand. We're talking 100% copper wire versus a CCA wire. That's all this comparison is about, and I will never ever tell you the brand of wire, because it doesn't matter. We snake skinned it so you can't even see the brand name, because it doesn't matter. We're talking about the technology, not the company or the brand behind it who's selling it. So the first test we've got here, we really wanted to come up with a stress test to show you the limitations of copper and the limitations of CCA wire. So what I'm about to show you, understand this is not what we recommend for anyone out there to do. If you buy or have a Kicker KXA 2400.1 amplifier, we 100% suggest you use one aught wire. What we wanted to do here is we wanted to stress the wire so that you could see the differences between copper and the differences between CCA. So what we've got here is from the Anderson connector, it's a 20 foot run of positive and a 20 foot run of negative. So there's 20 feet of each, and that's to simulate the length that you would have in an extreme car in today's world. Sometimes you gotta run across the firewall, down and back across the back, and in those cases you can't get into the 17 to 20 foot run of wire that you need. And in a lot of new cars today, they're not welded anymore, they are glued together. So finding a good solid place for ground can be very difficult. Most anyone you talk to tells you, whatever size power wire you're running back, just go ahead and run the same size ground and ground it at the battery or ground it at the alternator. You know, Do the big three upgrades so that you've got a good solid power source up front between your uh, engine, your uh, alternator, your battery, and your chassis. So running uh, your own ground wire is not uncommon. Matter of fact, in boats, Corvettes, anything with fiberglass, you have to do that because there's no real chassis to ground to. So this simulates doing that, running 20 foot of power wire back and then 20 foot of ground wire back because you gotta get back to the battery so the same gauge. So the first test we're gonna do is on the kicker four gauge. And so we got the amplifier here set up. It's through an Anderson connector. We have plenty of current. We have a tone generator right here, and this generator is gonna create a 50 hertz sine wave, the same frequency we're using out in that portable display you saw over in the studio. This is just a, more of a lab grade version sitting here on the top, but this is a 50 hertz tone generator. We're sending that signal down into the amplifier, and then we are reading, and this I gotta give a shout out to our good friend Steve Mead out at SMD, Steve Mead Designs. Uh, I reached out to him and said, hey man, I need to get a meter from you. Uh, we got some testing we wanna do coming up and some other in the future, and Steve Steve worked with us and basically he just sent us the meter to you. So I'm gonna give a big shout out to Steve Mead, man. Thank you uh, for getting us this tool to use in the Unmasked Live Studios. We're gonna be using this tool a lot in the future and we can't thank you enough for working with us on this. So thank you, Steve, I have to say that. So there's my shameless plug for Steve, he's a great guy. So what we got is this amp hooked up to the four gauge. We have an SMD uh, AMM1 amp dyno meter and it's gonna measure What's the power coming out of this amplifier? Well, what's the amplifier driving? Well, over here underneath this test bench, we've got great big silver thousand watt dummy loads. And that's what these plugs right here on the bench are for, these red plugs. I'm actually plugged into the dummy loads that are underneath the bench here. And so these come up and they plug into the amplifier. I will say this, we did several runs of this this afternoon so that we could test everything. What we're about to do is the absolute hardest 
test you can put an amplifier under, any amplifier, it doesn't matter. We are running a continuous sine wave with no duty cycle, it's on. We're running the amplifier to full output clipping. We are doing it into a fixed two ohm resistive load bank. We didn't smoke an amplifier, but it's entirely possible that on Mass Live tonight, you may see us smoke an amplifier. And if we do, we've got a backup sitting here, and then if we smoke it, we'll get them both fixed tomorrow because we know people back in repair. But this test we're about to do is the hardest test you can put any amplifier through. A speaker load uh, is a reactive load that the impedance is constantly changing, and actually the impedance rises on the speaker. So even if you wire it to two ohms, it's not playing at two ohms all the time. It's actually playing up and down, and that impedance is moving moving based on frequency, okay? This is a fixed resistive load. This is the hardest test on an amplifier. So we're letting you know up front that if we smoke an amp, we know it's entirely possible because this test is hard. We also know we design our amps to pass this test, so we feel pretty confident we're not gonna have a problem, but just in case, we're ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the meter here. And if you got anything to add, Rob, please feel free to chime in. Oh, I, I can just confirm that this is a very hard test. This is the test that me and Derek both run. And the one kilohertz is much easier. 40, 50 hertz, that is absolute torture on a sine wave, on a pure resistive load. It's a, it's murder on your amp. And that's why you often see uh, Derek running dual one op power runs to it to just kind of alleviate that. Uh, and, you know, running a four gauge power wires at 20 foot on the power and ground is it's a bit sketchy. It is very sketchy. I'll, I'll confirm that. It is. It is a bit sketchy. So what we're going to do here, I'm starting with the amplifier gain turned all the way down, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, signal. So now I've got a 50 hertz signal being fed into my amplifier. I'm going to fire the amplifier up. Let it come on. There's the light. That tells me I've got signal. We're good to go. And then I'm going to rely on my, my boy Timmy here, and I can see he's got a good picture on that. So I'm going to bring the amplifier up to clipping. So I'm just going to bring the gain up. Yeah, give it the beans. I'm going I'm to pour the gravy <laughs> on hard. So I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to take it just a little bit. I'm at 1%. I'm going to take it a little bit higher than 1%. We're right, should be right about 1%. So right there, you can see, I don't want to get in the way of the scope, but you can see we're putting in at about, about 2385 to 2442. It, it's fluctuating in between the high 2300s to mid 2400s, and we are into a two-ohm load. That's what you can see on that SMD amp dyno. And the voltage over here, you can see we're at 13.15, 13 point, it's fluctuating just about 13.1 to 13.15 voltage. Uh, and we are starting with uh, right about 14 coming out of the power supply. So through that 40 foot run, because it's power and ground, you can see we're getting about a volt drop, but our amplifier is still producing well over 2400 watts. It's definitely making rated power. And the wire itself, it's getting warm. But it's not, now understand, this is a stress test for four gauge on this big of an amplifier. This is absolutely a stress test. And I, uh, this the is a very, right the, the amp's very Go efficient. I, I know this amp's very efficient, but I'm sure you're still pulling over 200 amps here. Oh easily. yeah, easily. Uh, the, the wire right now, I'm reading on the positive wire with my meter, I'm up to 95 and a half degrees. It's fluctuating between 94 and 95. There's a 96, 97. There's 99, it's now getting up to 103. Let me touch it. Yeah, the wire is getting warm. And I'd expect the wire to get warm because I am pulling way more current over this four gauge wire than is recommended. I mean, we are way beyond spec as far as what we should be doing here. But what I wanted to show is the amplifier staying on. We've been running it. It's still putting out 2,500 watts. It's at 2,500 watts now, 2,476, 2,500. Uh, the voltage is dropping. So now you're seeing our semi-regulated power supply kick in and it's maintaining power. And we're seeing 12.68 volts now uh, coming from the bank over there. And that is because we are starting to heat this wire up and we're starting to see some loss through the wire. Uh, right now I'm up to 116, 117, 118. Take another reading up here. There's 119. So the wire is getting warm. I mean, it's definitely warm to the touch, but four gauge is running this kicker amplifier to full 2,500 watt output. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the gain back down. And hopefully everyone was able to see that on camera. What I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna shut the amplifier off. 
And what we're going to do, and we're going to do it live here on camera so you get to see the monkeys and the football having fun here, but we're going to disconnect the power and ground wire from the amplifier. We're going to unplug this Anderson connector, and then we're going to plug in an Anderson connector that has 20 feet of power and 20 feet of ground with four gauge CCA, and we're going to do the exact same test and let you see what happens there. So try to keep yourself entertained. Robert, if you've got some things yeah. you want to ask or questions of the audience, I'm going to go ahead and do this live because I want people to know this is actually what we're doing. Well, you know, Derek said here, it's crazy that amp that amp was doing its continuous rated power for that long on four gauge wire. That's a, uh, yes. you know, wire aside, that's pretty impressive for that amp to begin with. And we, that's a, that was a couple minutes, a couple minutes yeah, continuous easily. full on a sine wave. That's a, that speaks volumes to the amp, you know, just straight up. And I've, I'm afraid how hot this four gauge CCA wire is going to be. <laughs> and Kip said, you said you would not tell him the name of it. I'm here to tell him this no. is Hi Fi Vega branded CCA wire. <laughs> he had me send it to him last week. It's up there. I, he went ahead and put the skin on. I told him he didn't have to. But. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the thing is I want people to understand is, you know, yeah, we're kicker and yes, we sell products and we make products and, and we love that people have great experience with our products and, and, and we want to sell gear to, for people to enjoy their life and their music and where they want to take it. Absolutely. But, you know, Unmasked Live isn't just about kicker gear. We really want to give people the science of things. We want people to understand what they're getting into. And this is when it comes to power wire. If you don't use 100% copper, the only person you're cheating is yourself. Yeah, you're, you're saving a little bit of money in your wallet initially, but you're not getting the full performance out of your amplifier. And if you're using wire that is not giving you all the current you need, you are definitely current starving your amplifier. And we, can, we have the data that proves it, is when people send in amplifiers and our guys look at them and they figure out, you know, what is it? Is it blown FETs? Is it a power transformer? You know, what's going on with this amp? Why did it die? And then they get on, in a lot of cases that are extreme cases, they'll actually get on the phone and get with the customer or the dealer and, you know, get more details. Well, what was this hooked up with? How is it hooked up? Why? And they'll find out that, in a lot of cases, it's inferior wire. It's either uh, CCA wire, which is a no-no, or it's not true spec wire. And that's the other thing you got to be careful of is, you know, on one hand, we're telling you, you know, just use 100% copper. But the other thing you got to be careful for is there is undersized copper that it's it on the outside the jacket it appears to be a four gauge or a one out wire but when you actually look at the amount of copper that's inside you're paying for insulation you're not paying for copper and that does, insulation doesn't carry current so right. it, gauge matters true spec matters and 100 percent copper matters when it comes yep. to the amount of current and things we're doing with an amplifier it all matters and that, that's exactly why i started testing one out uh OFC wire because of this. Unlike, you know, welding cable is all, you know, held to American wire standard for the most part. Um, but car audio, you can get a mixed bag. You can get a very thick jacket that they're calling four gauge. Um, so you've got to get it from a reputable company for sure. Yes, you do. And again, the last thing I want is to advocate on our show, even though it's Kicker Unmasked Live, we're not advocating any brand over another brand. We're advocating technologies. Uh, yes, our wire is 100% copper. Yes, our wire is true American wire gauge. Yes, our wire is tin plated, so you don't have to worry about corrosion. Those are all great things about our wire, and I'm going to proudly say that. But at the end of the day, if you got a budget to hit and a Kicker wire kit's just not in the cards for you, and you can find a true spec 100% copper gauge wire kit, it from someone else that does hit your budget, I'm going to tell you to buy that every day because you are always going to be better off for the performance of your system and your money spent to use the right materials, even if it's not kicker. So, so what you're telling the chat? Sure. Go ahead. I was going to say, so what you're telling the chat is, is that you won't be mad at them if they use CCA, but you will be disappointed in them. I will be disappointed in them, and if they start having the conversation about performance or warranty issues, that's going to be my first question. It's going to be our warranty department's first question because wire matters. Wire is not an accessory. Wire is a component, and you just like the quality of your amp and the quality of your speakers and everything else, wire is a component that will make or break the performance of your system. Uh, Dabaday here, he says, is the wire casing melting point the same on CCA as on OFC? Dabaday, that's a good question. 
Don't know. It really depends on the manufacturer and what they've specified. Could you have CCA wire and copper wire that has the exact same insulation that's made to the same standard? You absolutely could. Can I tell you they are? I absolutely can't. I don't know what the melting points of everyone's jacket is, whether it's CCA wire or 100% oxygen-free copper. But is it possible that they're the same insulation? Yes, it is possible. Is it possible they're not? That is as well. So I can't answer that question for you directly. That would really have to be a manufacturer's question where they give you the breakdown or the uh, MS, uh, my brain just locked up on me, the material safety MSDS. data sheet, MSD. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going with that, is if you got the MSDS sheet, it would tell you everything, the composition of the jacket, the melting point, the flame point, all that information would be there. So I do not and cannot speak for any other company, and I cannot and will not say that their insulations are different between OFC and CCA. It could be, and it could not be, but that's a great question, and you should be asking the manufacturer that question if it concerns you. So great question. Thanks for bringing that up. So I've got our amp hooked back up, at least it looks like I do. I think I got all my ducks in a row here. And so what we've got here, and I gotta turn the, the uh, SMD meter back on, so just work with me here. I, and I'm again, a little we nervous. apologize that it's a I'm little clunky here, but we wanted to do this live. I, I'm nervous, I don't know what's gonna happen here. This is, now we, I, we were kind of sketchy on the four gauge OFC, so now we're extreme sketch mode. Did you test this earlier? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's and you're correct this is extreme sketch mode are you ready yeah let's go man this is what i live for all right okay so i'm gonna fire the amplifier back up timmy's over on camera so if he's getting everything into the picture he needs to get i'm just here to tell you what's going on <laughs> fire fire, fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can see we got 14.4 volts starting out uh, and that's at the amplifier here that's what this meter is uh, reading is what's the voltage at the amplifier i've got my test tone on 50 hertz we're now going through the same scenario 20 feet of power 20 feet of ground except this is cca so here we go i'm gonna start cranking it up And the amplifier just turned off. And I'm gonna turn it back down. And well this is this is what's cool, but I'm gonna try I gotta I gotta run the gain knob up slowly. So what's happening is the CCA wire. So they've taken to low voltage protection. Exactly. It's and so what's happening, if you can see on the meter, we're all we're we're only at fourteen hundred watts of output. So we're a thousand we're eleven hundred watts less than the previous wire, which was the solid copper, and I've already dropped a 13.6 volt, and I'm gonna just keep tweaking the knob up a little bit, try to get a little bit more out of here. There's 1700, there's 1800, we're down to 13.1 volts, I'm gonna keep tweaking up a little bit more, there's 1800 watts, eight, dude, 1900 watts, voltage sag, sagged so low that the amplifier went into low voltage protection mode. So I'm gonna turn the, the gain back down just a little bit so it'll come on and stay on. So there's 1,240 watts. So what you're seeing here is the same gauge wire, simply four gauge copper versus four gauge CCA. I can't even get the kicker amplifier to full rated output over CCA. So what are you seeing happen here? Again, as I said in the beginning of the test, we are stressing the wire. Four gauge wire is not designed to run this big of an amplifier, but this is what allows us to show you the limitations of CCA versus 100% copper. And what you're seeing is uh, on the 100% copper, we were able to make 2,500 watts, no problem. Here, I'm, I'm idling at 1310 and it's staying on. The most I was able to get it to this afternoon was 1800 before it would shut off because as the amplifier is trying to make more than 1800 watts, it can't because it cannot get the voltage and current it wants through that wire. It's, it's just not capable. So I've, I've got, it's 1966, it peaked there a little bit. I'm gonna turn it back down just a little bit more. Well, Andy had a good comment. Down? He said, this is a great video for the people that ask, why does it my amp keep shutting off when the bass hits? This is why. Bingo. And, you know, I got to tell you, and thanks, Andy, for saying that. Guys, I can't tell you how many times our techs and customer service or our amp repair guys in the back, when we trace down the problem to what the customer's experiencing, 
nine times out of 10, it's wiring or connections. Poor connections, like you said, Robert, and I can't stress that enough. I know you and I have both seen how many melted fuse holders and melted terminals because they weren't crimped properly, they weren't tight, and those loose connections or bad connections cause lots of heat, lots of melting, and, and current starve the amplifier, which causes the electronics to go bad prematurely. And also, from a guy called up, man, my amp, every time the bass hit, my amp shut off. Or, or at night, every time my amp hits, the bass, shut, bass shuts off. But during the day, it plays okay. Well, at night, you got your headlights on, and you might have your defroster on, and all these other things drawing power in your car. There's not enough voltage and current after the loss through undersized wire or CCA wire for the amplifier to live. And so to give you an idea, we've been here about the same amount of time as we were before, and that's what I want to do. We're up to 122 degrees. 122 there. Takes, take a few more measurements other places on the cable. There's 99, 105. And that's roughly 700 watts less power at this point? Six, Correct. 700, yeah. Correct. And, and the key, I mean, that wire is hot. I mean, I... I wish that we had 4D and you could actually feel the wires. I'm touching it through the screen. This wire is smoking hot. I mean, it's, it, if I was to keep this running, uh, I actually believe that we would reach, reach a position where the insulation would start getting gummy. We're at 100 and, man, I wish you, I don't know if you can catch that on camera. We're at 132 degrees on that jacket. 132. Oh, yeah. 132.5. 134. 135. And it's climbing. 136. So I'm going to head and I'm going to stop this because that's getting way too hot. <laughs> but as you can see, the amplifier is still trying to make power. I mean, it's sitting there making 1600, 1700 watts. And that's as much as I can get out of that four gauge CCA wire. So let's just call that, let's just call it 1600 watts to be safe. So 1600 watts is all the power I can get out of four gauge CCA. And doing that, the wire is smoking, smoking hot. So could I use four gauge CCA for an installation? Sure, you can, you can do it all day long. But what would be the safest amplifier to use this four gauge CC on? Honestly, probably about an 800 watt amplifier and that's probably about it and that's probably stretching it. Depends on how long you're gonna play that system before that outer jacket's gonna get taut to the point that it's dangerous. And so, yes, again, I gotta stress, no, we do not recommend four gauge wire on a KXA 2400, but this is how we were able to do an extreme stress test and show you the limitations of four gauge CCA versus four gauge copper. And I'm, I'm gonna look at the time, what time is it, Tim? All right, so I know we're getting close on time here, so we actually have one more test lined up. Um, we'll push it, yeah, we're gonna push it to another show. But we've actually got a demo here where we can do the same thing with one aught wire, and we will do that on another show. We'll bring you back. But the key to this is we did listen to what you guys were saying in the comment feeds on our show and on our social media. You've seen the display over there with eight gauge and, and it was a lot of comments. Ah, that's eight gauge, that's not real wire, that's not big, nobody uses eight gauge, which isn't true because we sell a ton of eight gauge. People use eight gauge, but what you wanted to know is, well, that difference I'm seeing or that handicap, it won't exist if I go to bigger CCA wire. And I hope what this shows you, and we'll do it on a future show, we'll bring in the one odd into the equation, let you see that is, the problem is there, it's just the amount of current does increase. How much current can I pull through eight gauge CCA versus four gauge CCA? Can I pull more? Absolutely. But the proportional difference, eight gauge copper versus four gauge copper, smokes it. This amplifier was able to make full power on four gauge copper and couldn't even eke out 1600 watts or more over the CCA and the wire got dangerously hot. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this demo. We love putting it together for you. We're gonna roll back to the studio and roll this up. Oh, you wanna wrap it here? I guess we're gonna wrap it here. You got a, uh, anything to add to that, Robert? No, uh, I think you covered it pretty well. And I will say, you know, kicker wiring kits are pretty nice. I really like them. They have the, the uh, tech flex on the part that goes under the hood, which is nice. So that makes it look good. But yeah, they're, they're nice. And the amps, uh, you know, they speak for themselves. You just seen it. You you do. And, and here's the thing, guys. We are Kicker. Kicker Unmasked Live is a Kicker production, but we're audio enthusiasts and we're going to talk technology. We're going to talk hints and tips and special guests. And this is what I'll say. Kicker wire kits are 
a little more expensive than some other options in the marketplace. And we know that. We are a premium wire kit. And like you said, we have the Tech Flex. We feel we have excellent fuse holders. Our fuse holders are 100% solid real material that's plated over. It's not tin metal. It's not cheap pop metal. These are real brass fuse holders. Uh, we have a quality product. And if you buy a kicker amplifier and then you feel confident enough in that amp that you feel confident enough to get a kicker wire kit, we're confident enough to tell you, okay, that amp that's got a one-year warranty, we're going to give you three years on amplifier because we know if you use the right wire, you're not going to have a problem with the amp. So we have no problem extending the warranty out. And if you do have a problem, we're going to cover it for three years. So I'm a realist. I know we're a premium price kit but we give you value for that premium price and we stand behind what we say. At the end of the day, if you're just trying to put your system together, and, and I think it was, uh, was it Justin that said, I think it was a favorite thing I heard he said, you know, everything's about budget. It doesn't matter what you're building, everyone has a budget. If your budget, you know, you decide this is the amp I can afford and this is the subwoofer I'm gonna get and I, and I gotta get wire, because I, I got no choice, you have to have wire to make it work, please do yourself a favor. If you can't stretch out, if you, even if you bought a kicker amp, you go, man, I, I love the kicker wire kit, but I just can't, I can't swing it. But I, I've got to get my amp hooked up and working. Go find yourself 100% copper from wherever you need to find it. And don't cheat yourself by getting CCA. And don't cheat the performance of your amplifier. Don't cheat your wallet. And more importantly, don't put yourself in a position where you can literally be in a fire hazard. Because what I'm telling you is not fear. It's reality is you can cause a fire if you pull too much current through that wire, any wire. If you exceed its current capacity, will get hot. You melt that insulation, you're going to be in a fire situation. So, so that's the best way I can wrap it up. I don't want this to sound like an info mosher for selling you kicker wire. This is information so that you know how to get the best safe performance out of your products. Yeah, you got it covered, man. It's, I can't add much to that. You know, I would always say definitely always use OFC. That that OFC is life unless you're playing jokes or telling jokes and then, you know. <laughs> And, you know, I know you're all about OFC, but the fact that you've got that nickname for, for CCA, I, I had to have you on the show. You know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, I, I, it's my cross to bear, and I will bear it. So here's what's crazy. Uh, you guys know what the prizes are, and since I'm in the lab, I don't have my piece of paper in front of me. I have no idea what the prizes are. Is it EB300s and shirt, as usual, for third and second? It is? Okay. So, and koozies. And koozies. Okay. So third place and second place, it's the same prize. And you guys already know what it is, but I just like to let you know. Uh, you're going to get a Kicker Unmasked Live gray t-shirt in your size. You're going to get a set of EB300 earbuds, which are fantastic Bluetooth earbuds. And you're going to get a pair of Kicker koozies to keep whatever beverage you like nice and crisp while you're enjoying your toasty wire coming out of your amplifier. And our first winner tonight, number three, and I'm assuming Sandy's going to throw it up on the screen, or if she's not, I'll just announce them here. But number three, third place winner, James S. from Goldsboro, North Carolina. So James S. from Goldsboro, North Carolina, you are our third place winner tonight. Uh, I'll go over this now and I'll go over it at the end. Again, we need you to reach out to social at kicker.com. We need your full shipping address, no P.O. box. We do need your phone number. We need that for shipping information. We promise we're not using your phone number for marketing purposes or selling it. It's just to go into the shipping box so that if they have an issue delivering, they can contact you. And we need you to verify your shirt size. There can always be a mistake when you click the box. Maybe it, it, the way you clicked small and it actually said medium or whatever. We just want to make sure you get the right size shirt. So do that. Obviously, Bill Frog will reach out to you as well. It's a two-way street, but it's social at kicker.com. Number two tonight is going to be Jason C. from Las Vegas, Nevada. So, Jason, you are winner number two tonight. You're getting that unmasked gray shirt. You're getting those EB300 earbuds, and you're going to get a set of kicker koozies to keep your favorite beverage nice and cold. Uh, again, same information. Shipping, no P.O. box. Give us your phone number and verify your shirt size. Social at kicker.com. Bill will be reaching out to you as well. And then first place, what's the special prize for first place tonight? Wire kit. Oh, yeah, the wire. That makes sense. Why wouldn't we do a wire kit? Let's do a wire kit. Yeah. So what we're going to do for, is there a specific one or is it anyone they want? Anyone they want. Oh, that's even better. Okay, so first place winner tonight, you're going to get a black limited edition Kicker Unmasked Live event t-shirt. We are almost out of those, but we have enough to try to fit sizes. There's going to come a point where we may have to move you to gray because we're running out of blacks and those were limited edition runs, but you're going to get a black tee. We got your size. 
you're going to get a set of koozies, and you're going to get your choice of any kicker wire kit. So if you need a marine wire kit for your boat, if you need a PKD1 or a PKD4 for your car, if you need a VK, a value kit, whatever you're hooking up, you can select from any kicker wire kit, and that's going to be your prize. So our winner for first place tonight is Dean S. from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Dean S. S from Minneapolis, Minnesota. You are our first place winner. Congratulations to all our winners. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Again, we do these drawings right on the spot here. We have it for the people who are just attending the show. We appreciate you tuning in. It means a lot to us that you come spend some time with us because you know you could be doing a multitude of other things and we're sure glad to have you here. We have fun doing this and hopefully you have some fun while you're here and you get some valuable knowledge along the way. So congratulations to all our winners. Reach out to social at kicker.com with the necessary information and Bill will be reaching your direction as well. We just want to make sure we communicate and get those prizes in the mail to you. So with that said, I'm going to look over here at my screen, which means I'm looking away from the camera, but I'll go back to the screen. I'm just, I'll pretend I'm looking at my boy Hi-Fi Vega. Hi-Fi, you got anything to add tonight? Yeah, I have a few plugs, but before that, I just want to say thank you for having me on the show again. I love wire. I love accessories more than maybe any other type of car audio. It's one of my weird quirks. I have many. This is one of them. But the plugs, tomorrow we're going to have Soundman on 12E Talk. So that's going to be, it may be wild. We don't, we don't know what's going to happen. That'll be fun. <laughs> but then on Thursday, I do a show called Reverse Polarity with Dean. That's a very fun show. But not only that, we're doing an after show. We're doing movies. It's called SciJag. So it'll be directly after Reverse Polarity, SciJag. I'll have links in Reverse Polarity so you can check it out. Talking about movies, not, not about car audio. Fantastic. Hey, uh, I know you probably already got plans for this week, but keep me in mind, I'd love to join you on a movie episode one time. Let me know. I'll gladly join you. Oh, for sure. I've already volunteered you, Derek. Uh, all my friends. If you're a friend, you've been volunteered to come on uh, just by, you know, osmosis. <laughs> I've, I've been voluntold that I will right. definitely be there. And, and I will definitely be tuned in tomorrow night, 12V Talk. I think that's going to be a fantastic show. I'm looking forward to that one. I don't know what to expect like everyone else, but I bet it's going to be a good time. Um, thank you for joining us tonight, Robert. I couldn't think of anyone better to join us for this episode. And maybe we circle back around and we get to that one-aught cable and we will find a few other tests we can show that will be cool. We'll have you back for that. You willing to join us? Oh, gladly. Anytime. I I'm trying to get co-host status. I don't know how many times I need to join, but once I reach co-host status, then I can retire. You got the threads. You're close. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. With that said, thank you for joining us tonight. I got to say to everyone who joined us this evening, thank you for participating in the drawings. Thanks to JD over at Hoppy for that great giveaway we did this morning. We got a great show planned for you next Tuesday. Look for the teaser coming out later in the week. It's going to be fun. You're going to want to tune in next week. If you like prizes and drawings, we keep them coming here on Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly. It's my pleasure for Tim. We got Ernie backstage over there running the keyboard. He's further away than you. I can't even see him. We got Sandy and we got uh, Jason Lucky back there doing their thing to keep the show running as smooth, smooth as we can with Bill and with Jeremy out for the night. I know Jeremy's watching tonight. I'm sure Bill is a little bit too. For all the 200 plus employees here at Stillwater Designs Kicker, in Stowater, Oklahoma. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the content and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a safe one. We'll see you soon.